Hi, George here. Let's see how you can open up and edit camera raw files inside of Photoshop Elements. Now you can't edit them directly in Photoshop Elements, so you have to use a different program for that, but it's kind of built into Photoshop Elements. Let's see where that is. Go up here to the file menu, come down to open in camera raw right there. Click on that. Choose your raw file. I have one right here. I'll use this one. Choose open. There we go. Now notice that this is in the camera raw editor. It's not in Photoshop Elements, which is back there it's in this new editor kind of floating on top. So you can't edit directly inside of Photoshop Elements, but you can do a lot of your editing right here. Now this is more kind of like Adobe's Lightroom program as opposed to Photoshop Elements. So it's a great editor for doing your standard photo imagery adjustments. If you want to do the fancy stuff, you know, your layers and putting out the graphics and changing backgrounds, those kind of things, all those have to be done over in Photoshop Elements. And if that's what you want to do, Come down here where it says open. You can either open or open as a copy. I'd recommend doing open as copy. And what that does is it then opens that image over here inside of Photoshop Elements. But even though it says .cr2 at the top here, a camera raw file format, it actually isn't a camera raw file format any longer. It's now a PSD file, a standard Photoshop Elements PSD file. Okay, let's go back to the camera raw editor. Won't we'll save that. And there we go back again. Let's take a look around here and see what you have. Right hand side, this just shows you the values where they are in your image, the red, blue, green values, black point left hand side, white point right hand side. You can see on this image here, most everything is over here on the left hand side, but it's pretty easy to see. It's all pretty much a dark image. Below that, some basic information about the initial photograph right here. Then we have our edit section. You can either go for an auto edit, which is occasionally not that bad at all, or you can switch to black and white if you want to. You can choose your profile. I always leave my profile here at just the Adobe Color, the default one. Down below that, we have three sections, basic, detail, and calibration. Your basic has your temperature tint, exposure contrast highlights, some of those things, your saturation right down here. Detail, of course, is going to have your sharpening, noise reduction, and color noise reduction. And below that, your calibration. This allows you to change to an earlier version if you need to, but I always leave mine at the current version. So you can just kind of ignore the calibration right down below here. Now what I found as the best way to approach this is just to start at your basic and go from the top down to the bottom. The first thing you need to do is to choose a white balance as shot, auto, daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten, fluorescent, flash, or a custom white balance. I'm just going to leave mine alone since I really don't know what should be white in this image. So I'll leave it as is. On temperature and tint, this allows you to do some color adjustments. Your temperature, as you can see by the slider here, this is going more blue on the left and more yellow on the right. Your tint is going more green on the left and more magenta on the right. So you can control those values. I'll leave that one alone as well for right now. And I'll come down here to exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. And I'll work down this top to bottom. Starting off with the exposure, it looks like it's a little underexposed possibly. So I'll just take the slider control and move it to the right and see what happens. And it's already a much better just by going over here. That's too bright, too dark. So I'll find something that looks good to my eye. I think right around in here looks pretty good. This is just a visual look. Just go back and forth until you find a look that you like. You can always come back and readjust later after you've gone through more of these. So don't worry about that. Okay, contrast, it's low contrast. As you can see, so no need more contrast. That just brings back the darks mostly. Notice that the white over here doesn't really change as I do this, but it does bring in some of the darks, some of the richness back again. So let's bring the contrast up a little bit. Highlights is going to increase or decrease your highlights. If you watch the sun on the right-hand side there, it gets burned out. If I want detail, it's a bright image, a lot of sun there. I'm going to move the highlights clear to the left-hand side to bring that down as much as possible and retain some detail around there. Shadows is pretty high. You can see here, go to the left, it really darkens them down and the right. This depends upon the mood you want. If you want a darker, more early morning mood, you may want to go dark on your shadows. It's again, a personal choice. You may want to have you know, light sky, but dark shadows, or you may want to have detail in the shadows. I'll leave that right about here. I think it's pretty good. Whites and blacks are similar to highlights and shadows. There's the whites up and down, as you can see there. After about here, it doesn't really seem to be affecting my image much. So I'll go low on that one. Think a little bit more black, and if we go to the right, it lightens the blacks up, left darkens the blacks down. Go a little bit more black, which will help you richen up the image. And it's looking better already. Now, as you're working through, you may want to see how it's going compared to the original image. You can do that right down here. We have a couple of buttons. 
cycle before and after, and then toggle default settings. There's the default, and here's how it looks so far. So it's looking a lot better, as you can see. Okay, clarity, vibrance, and saturation. Vibrance is going to try increasing your colors without changing your values. Saturation changes everything. You'll find that saturation tends to do a faster change. You get more color more quickly this way. So I'll bring this up just a little bit, and then I'll balance that out with the vibrance. And that's pretty good. You can see your clarity is giving us a sharpness effect on this. But again, right about here, I like to always rock these back and forth and make a choice from that. And that's looking pretty nice in there. Let's now come back up and take a look at our temperature and our tint, since everything else is pretty nice. We want a bit more blues in here. I can move my temperature to the left just a little bit. Doesn't take much, as you can see. There's a little more yellow or a little more blue. Depends upon, again, the effect you want. If I want to have more of that sunrise effect, I may move a bit more towards the yellows in here for more of that. I think that looks pretty good. And we'll balance our tints off again. And once again, I'm going to go more for a sunrise coloration. So I'll go a bit more on the magenta side of that as well. I'll just add a bit more color. Double check that. Looking a lot better. Also, notice now up here on the histogram, we've really evened out our values. It's now pretty even across. We still have some real dark spots and that real bright white sun is in here. But everything else is pretty even, looks a lot better. It's no longer piled up on the left-hand side. Okay, let's now come down and take a quick look at detail. I'll just close down the basic. You can also show and hide your effect right here if you want to. Okay, detail, sharpening, noise reduction, and color noise reduction. I don't really have any color noise problems in here or noise problems. And it looks pretty sharp to me looking up in this area here. I don't really think we need to have anything on this, but you can rock those back and forth to see if that will improve your image any. I'll just leave those alone. There are a few more options over here on the right hand side. Top one is edit. This is crop and rotate. And here's red eye removal. I leave those two things alone. And I'll do those over inside of Photoshop Elements. And there are a few more settings right down here. Reset to open, reset to default, and apply previous settings. Up at the top, we do have a preference dialog box in here. Not much on that one. And right over here, you can convert and save the image. Brings up a save as dialog box. Save in same location. There's the folder. I can change the file name in here and so forth. Again, this just saves it out without having to do anything else, without having to take it over into Photoshop Elements. And our save option is just the DNG or digital negative file right there. Okay. Let's go ahead and take this over now into Photoshop Elements. Come down here where it says Open. I'll choose Open as Copy. There we go. It comes with all those adjustments made right here. And then if I go over here to File and Save As, you'll see it's coming out as a Photoshop PSD file. It doesn't save it back to the Camera Raw file format. Even if I did File and Save, it still goes to the Photoshop format. It's no longer a camera raw file at this point once it's inside Photoshop Elements. But of course, once you're here, you can use all of your regular Photoshop Elements tools as well and continue your editing. Now, if you want to keep the quality as high as possible, just leave it in that PSD file format and then do a final output or final print to whatever format you need for your final use, such as going to a JPEG for use on the web or just print. You can print directly from that PSD file format. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe, and take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that in the description. And I'll see you next time.